the automobile, an invention no modern human can be without. To some, the car is simply a necessary tool to get from point A to point B. To others, it's a symbol of status and wealth, to be swapped out on a whim. But to one individual, it's so much more. The car is a being, an important friend, a partner in all things, an irreplaceable comrade. And that individual is me. That's right. I live in my car. Now, to a lot of teenagers, the first car they've ever owned is something that they cherish. And Archie is no exception to this. Today we're going to be taking a look at Betsy, the name given to Archie's jalopy, which he painstakingly does his best to keep running. Now, Archie's jalopy is easily the most famous car in the Archie Comics universe. It's a mishmash of different parts and different screws and bolts, that's held together by duct tape and a child's dreams. Unfortunately, the duct tape is wet and the child is Hitler. But while this car is a mess, it is Archie's mess, and now it's our mess. So just sit back, ooze right on, and crack open a comic. Our first story, Coming Apart, starts with Archie hunched under old Betsy giving her some much-needed life support. Jughead points out that old Betsy is death on wheels, and Archie assures his friend that the old girl has life in her yet. Jughead suggests scrapping the car and trading up, but Archie dismisses the idea as he believes that Betsy grows in value each day. They arrive at a drunk yard where... <laughs> sorry, a junkyard, where a writer clearly has some pun fun and Archie convinces Jughead that he might be onto something. Jughead in turn convinces Archie that instead of sitting on his gold mine, he should sell now and put the money towards a Bulak. Wheelak? Huh. Which, according to the Professional Car Society, was an actual thing and not just Archie's attempt at uh, making fun of Buick. They gush over the auto, and the salesman rudely approaches them, immediately changing his tune when he realizes they're potential customers, and responds in a way that would scare off said potential customers. Good. Archie presents his car, and the dealer breaks out into hysterical laughter. Archie and Jughead attempt to leave in a huff, but Jughead slams the door, causing Betsy to completely fall apart adequately representing the common issues with Archie's jalopy. That shit don't work. Now, before I get into the review, if you've seen these videos before, you'll know that the format has kind of been evolving. At first, I just kind of gave an opinion piece after the story. Well, it was one story at first. But then I added in, you know, multiple stories, and I also added in the reviews in the last video. Now... I don't really have criteria for these reviews, if it's like, if it makes me laugh, if it's, if it's, uh, consistent, if I feel like, uh, it's an interesting read, even if I don't like the story, you know, I'll give it a higher score than I normally would. Like, with the Dr. Claus storyline from the first video, I didn't give that a review, but if I did now, I'd give it solid 5 out of 5 Reggies, because even though it was the worst story I've ever read, it was very memorable, very interesting. Like, none of the plot points made sense, but I'm just like, someone was clearly on drugs when they made that story. So, with that in mind, uh, I'll get on to the inner, or I'll get on to the review of this comic, which, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> Betsy breaking down is funny. Three out of five Reggies. Our next story, Heats On, opens on Archie polishing Betsy on blocks. Jughead asks a stupid question and gets a stupid answer, and Archie explains that he's normally too busy to polish the jalopy when he's using it, and since he can't use it in the winter due to the top not working, he may as well polish it. Jughead makes a crack about Betsy, and Archie endures the horrible humiliation. He tells Jughead that he takes the tires off to give Betsy a rest, and Jughead tells Archie that the tires 
need to be retired, which is a funny, although Archie contests this. Unfortunately for Archie, I was recently voted Mr. Joke, and I can confirm it is a funny. <laughs> Jughead continues to pile on the Pulitzer-worthy jokes as he describes the tires as Bald City Baby, and he's banned from riding in Archie's screaming metal death trap, much to his delight. Archie reassures his car that he still loves her, because he's insane, and the weather begins to clear. Archie takes advantage of Mother Nature and takes old Betsy out for a spin to Ronnie's place to show off his shine in the sunshine. He drives over and honks the horn to call his hoe, and this causes the built-up snow on the roof to collapse over him, most likely killing him. Now, I like this story. Jughead gets a few good quips in, and it had the bravery to kill off a major recurring character. My only gripes would be, for some reason, Veronica doesn't live in a mansion, and Betsy doesn't visibly break down. Two out of five Reggies. Hey there, guys. Have you turned invisible like me and are having problems being seen by people? Well, look no further. I mean, they're going to look further past you. So they don't need to look no further. Because you're invisible. Just go on down to Spotify and type in Podcast Pasta. Or you can listen to a great podcast with different takes and uh, different guests. And, you know, you can just go down there and soon you'll be seen by everybody. You'll be considered the cream of the crop and you won't have to worry about people looking right past you. So, like I said, go down to Podcast Pasta, wherever that's streaming. It's a lot of places to listen. Our final story for today takes us all the way back to the 60s, probably. It opens with Archie taking his jalopy out for a spin and accidentally slinging some mud on a much uglier Reggie Mantle. I guess me and Archie are both slinging mud today, huh? It's another certified funny from Mr. Joke himself. Reggie gets angry at this turn of events and goes for the old one-two, but his aim is worse than his alliteration and he slips into even more mud. Reggie swears revenge, and later Archie is visited by a boy in blue. Betsy has been declared persona non grata on the streets, and has been deemed a safety hazard. On closer inspection of the court order, it seems Mantle has used his father's influence as police commissioner to grease the wheels of the law, ungreasing Archie's wheels at the same time. Just then, Jughead and his famous cat appear with the solution. The county fair is having a jalopy race, with the prize being a brand new car. Archie reasons that the race won't take place on the street, so he's free to enter his auto immobile. The next day, word gets around that Archie is entering the race, and Reggie has a fancy new motor put in a jalopy to win the race and keep Archie off the streets. Archie laughs at Reggie's jalopy until he recognizes the sound of his powerful motor and gets out to complain. This action loses him precious time in the race, putting them in last place. Suddenly, Jughead's famous cat attacks Archie, causing him to drive off a cliff, which miraculously does not kill him, but puts him in first place. This is short-lived as he begins to lose steam with even the legendary Stinky Goggin passing them in his Stanley Steamer. Incidentally, Stinky Goggin and the Stanley Steamer is one of the most infamous pornos known to man. Stinky Goggin proceeds to turn his head 180 degrees and crashes into a tree, tragically ending the tale of the greatest story that was never told. Archie catches up to the other racers as they've stopped in front of a stream but Archie barrels on, luckily driving over the only shallow spot. The other drivers assume the entire stream is shallow and drive right into the water, giving Archie a lead. After taking a deadly shortcut over a thin tree, Archie heads towards the finish line, but crashes just before they can reach it. They panic and try to pull the car out, but it is no use. 
All hope seems lost, but Stinky Goggin looks down at them from hell and possesses Jughead's infamous cat, who jumps on Reggie, causing him to crash into Archie, propelling his car forward and winning Archie the race. The comic ends with Archie taking apart the brand new convertible and building Betsy back into a street legal ride. So this story made me laugh, but not intentionally. Who the hell is Stinky Goggin? And why did Stinky Goggin get a name drop only to crash and die two panels later? Like, I don't even remember any of the story I read a minute ago, but I will never forget Stinky Goggin. So to commemorate this, I'm going to give this story five out of five Stinky Goggins and my coveted Poggin Goggin Award. So I had a lot of fun breaking down those stories like Archie's Jalopy breaks down on a daily basis. Thank you for watching, and if you want to see more Stinky Goggin, just subscribe to this channel and uh, yeah, give it a like. I don't know, you know what, you know what to do. But uh, yeah, and I'll uh, see you next week with a brand new Archie story.